Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, church. It's good to be here again teaching the word of the Lord to you. Happy Sunday to every single person. This month of March, you're breaking forth and you're breaking through in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, if you're joining us for the very first time, I will encourage you to please visit our website. And the reason for that is to get yourself acquainted with a series of teaching which has preceded today's sermon. We'll be studying the wonderful names of God and these names reveal a particular uh, personality and relationship that we can have with God. And knowing God, knowing Him well, is what gives us the confidence, the faith, to be able to move from where we are to where we want to be. And I believe that each and every one of us have a vision for the year 2016. And I believe it shall be accomplished in the precious name of Jesus Christ. There's no situation that's peculiar to any man. Many of us are going through certain challenges of life that we feel, whoa, the old world is coming to an end. To be honest with you, the Bible has given us a way out. And I believe that as we begin to study the wonderful names of God, we begin to see how God moves in diverse situations. Some of them might just be tailor-made to your current situation, and I believe that will give you the solution you need, or the light at the end of the tunnel, to be able to see your way through. Now, the name Jehovah Nissi simply means, the Lord is my banner. The banner signifies victory. If you read the books of Exodus chapter 17, if you read from verse 8 to 15, the Bible describes a situation when the children of Israel fought with the Amalekites. And um, Joshua was in a valley fighting the Amalekites and Moses was on a mountain and his hands was raised up. And every time his hand went up, the Israelite won. And every time his hand came down, the Amalekites won. And as soon as Noah, um, Aaron and Ur noticed the, the changes in the battle um, status, they quickly held the hand of Moses up to make sure that they won the victory. And after they finished winning, Moses raised up an altar. And he called it Jehovah Nisi. Because God is our standard, is our banner, is our defender. And I believe that today, God will reveal himself as the banner over your life. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now shall we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. We bless your holy name. We thank you so much for your love, for your guidance, your protection. Thank you for safety now going out and coming in. And thank you for bringing us here to this very hour. Lord, my God, as we seek to listen to your word, open our eyes of understanding, reveal yourself as our Jehovah Nisi, to the glory and praise of your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Life is a battle, and I've tried to constantly emphasize this. Life will always have challenges, will always face difficulties, will always face situations that seem overwhelming. As a matter of fact, Jesus told us that in this world we will have trouble. John 16, verse 33. Now, all Christians will face battle, both physical, both spiritual. Now, you have three choices, to be quite honest with you. Number one, you can run away from it. In other words, you can act like a coward. And uh, this is not a very nice name, but I know that. But that's one situation or one option you can take. Number two, you can ignore it like an ostrich and stick your head in the sand and pretend that the, there's no battle around you and then, you know, simply allow the enemy to have his way. Or number three, you can actually engage in it. Now, the Bible, Sammy said, rather, in the, in the scriptures of Psalms 18 verse 34, he says, He trains my hand for battle and my arm can bend a bow of bronze. bronze. David said, "My praise be to the Lord, my rock, who trained my hand for war and my fingers for battle. Psalms 144 verse 1. So clearly, God has made provision for you in, in his word if you want to engage in battle. And I want you to understand that until you're willing to fight your battle, until you're willing to uh, confront the enemies that's confronting you, then I cannot see victory anywhere around you. Because the heavens of the heavens belong to the Lord, and the earth has been given to the children of men. Psalms 115 verse 16. Many times, many of us complain about why is there so much challenges in the world. And I can tell you with all authority based on the word of God that men are responsible for what is going on on earth. You often heard the phrase that evil prevail when good men do nothing. And you and I are the good people because we have been called the righteousness of Christ. So therefore, we are to engage in battle and warfare. 
Paul says we fight against not flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. All kind of authorities, all kind of things are going on in the world today. Jesus has told us in the books of Luke 10, 19, that he has given us power to tread over serpent and scorpion, over all the powers of the enemy. The reason he has given us that power is because along our journey, on the narrow path to our destiny, we will encounter um, serpents and scorpion, and we have the power to tread over them. We're not supposed to run from them. We're not supposed to ignore them. We're supposed to engage them and destroy them. Now, who is Jehovah Nissi to you? Number one, Jehovah Nissi is the Lord our banner. A banner is a, is a symbol, a visible symbol of God's presence in your life. Of whose side you're on. It's a, it is, it's a reminder that God is at work. Just as in the, in the old days, in the days of the Old Testament, when God gave the children of Israel the Ark of the Covenant. To remind them constantly that he is with them wherever they go. And thank God that in the New Testament, the Bible says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So wherever we go, God goes with us. You must understand that God is always with you. That's why you have a banner over you. So whenever you choose to run from a battle, you're saying, Lord, you're not strong enough to face this man. Banner reveals identity and is a rallying point for people. So when you say God is our defender, for example, for those that work in large buildings, sometimes it's a fire test or there's actually a fire in the building. Then you are told to rally at a certain point. It's a meeting point you're supposed to meet at. Because that is the uh, place which has been designed for all people to be. So whenever we flash the banner, Jehovah Nissi, it means that we are going under a certain place to meet. That's why we come to the church that has a title over it or name over it. Like Litwick, Living in the World International Church, that tells us where the banner of God to. He said the, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. That's why we have a banner over us. The banner also signifies the one that we trust when times are tough. The one that we trust when times are tough. You see, our God is the one that gives us power to face the enemy. Many of us still believe in their own strength. They still believe in their own ability. I've often told people that grammar or your vocabulary does not chase away the devil. He has been somebody that has been in heaven. Before he was cast out. So there's nothing in this world that can scare him. Except the word of God and the authority in his name. So whenever we lift up the banner, we are telling the devil we know where we belong. We know to whom we belong. And you cannot scare us. You see, there was a story I read. About a World War uh, passenger ship that was sailing from Great Britain to the port in New York. Now, the captain was so af afraid of the um, the enemy vessels within the waters he was going to be traveling in the Atlantic Ocean, because this is war times, that he's scared of the destroyers, the submarines in the ocean, positioned strategically to actually destroy any vessel. Now, he called up the admiral. You know, many of us sometimes call up our spiritual fathers. He called up the admiral, the, the soldier, I mean, the captain of the, of the ship, and whenever he called the admiral, in a very calm voice, he said to the captain, whatever you do, do not take a detour. Just keep driving. Just keep going straight ahead until you get to your port. He said, yes, sir. So he mounted the ship and then he began sailing. A few days into the sail, he got into the deep waters of the Atlantic and then he began to see submarines position everywhere. And he was really, really scared. Very, very, very scared. So he picked up the phone again. Like many of us, we like to call our pastors or we like to call God and begin to lament to him. And then when he picked up the phone, he said, Sir, I can notice a lot of vessels, a lot of um, submarines all positioned. The captain, the admiral said in a very calm voice to him again, Whatever you do, just keep going straight ahead until you get to New York. So he kept because the order has come from above. 
May you hear God's voice in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, so he kept going straight ahead. He never knew what was going on, but he knew that they did not attack him. A few days later, he finally got to port in New York. And then he simply, you know, um, anchored the ship. But as he did, he noticed the mighty destroyer of the British, um, of the British uh, uh, Navy behind him, also going to port. The whole time when he was traveling, the destroyer, the mighty ship was behind him without even having a slightest clue that the ship was there. So in situations of life that looks overwhelming, that looks like we are going to fail, that we will seem like we are going to fall, God is constantly behind us, beside us, within us, ahead of us, because it's Alpha and Omega, and he will never leave us nor forsake us, no matter how tough the battle gets. So I want you to understand this, ladies and gentlemen, that God is true and faithful to what he has said. He is Jehovah Nissi. What does Jehovah Nissi mean also? He tells us clearly whose side we are on. Remember Joshua, he said, well, you can choose who you want to serve. I have no problem with that. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Who do you want to serve and whose side are you on? Many of those who are sports fans will tell you this. Oftentimes, they buy the jersey of their, of their club or their team. Somebody one day uh, accused me of not being a, a loyal supporter of the football team in England that I support, which is Arsenal. The reason being is he came to my house and then he could not find one souvenir of Arsenal in my house. Not a, key, not a teacup, not a scarf, not even um, a jersey. So he said, what team do you say you support again? I said, Arsenal. He said, where is there a souvenir in your house? I said, I don't have one. Because he says, well, that's, that means you're not a true loyal supporter of Arsenal. So, you must be able to identify with God clearly. And this is shown in our character, it's shown in our words, it's shown in our action, it's shown in the way we live our lives. Truly, without people, without you opening your mouth to say to people, I'm a Christian, they should be able to recognize that you are a Christian. Because then you are clearly said, I stand for God, I declare for Him. And then you begin to see people who antagonize you. But don't be afraid. Like the destroyer that was behind the captain, God is constantly with you. When we talk about Jehovah Nissi, we also talk about the banner shows our loyalty to our side. When you go to a football team, you must wear the jersey, or when it's a football game, you wear the jersey of the team that you support. And you sit around the stand where the fans are because you belong to those people. So, it shows what size you belong. Now, Loyalty means something. Battles are not always quick one. That's not that's the truth of the that's the truth of, uh, of the matter. When you read the story that we read earlier about the children of Israel against the Amalekites, they fought from morning to evening. It was not a single minute battle. It was exhausting, it was tiring, it was long. But yet they persevered and they maintained their focus because they have loyalty to God. You can't quit when the battles get tough. Winners don't quit and quitters don't win. You've heard that time and time again. Now, number five or six, I believe now, is that when we talk about Jehovah Nissi, the banner, we are talking about whom we are going to give glory to. And I know many of us know that God do not want to share his glory with any man. God will not share his glory with any man. So after the battle has been won, like Moses did, which raised up a banner or raised up an altar, because it signifies that God is the one that gave us the victory. When you have the banner over you, you're basically saying God is the one that has given us the victory and we will give all glory to him. Moses built an altar and called it Jehovah Nissi. Because God is the one that gave them the victory against the Amalekites. Now, having said all of this, we begin to look at why or how do we accomplish this. You see, the victory in Christian life comes when we combine worship and work together. Joshua picked faithful men to fight 
And Moses prayed. The Bible clearly says in the book of James 2 verse 26, Therefore, as a body without a spirit is dead, so is faith without work is also dead. And I'm praying that none of us would die in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Go about work as if it is if as if all depended upon you and trust God knowing that all depends upon him. And this is one of the things we can learn from um, Jehovah Nissi. Every Christian will go through some kind of challenges, some kind of um, pressure of life. But God has made a way out for us and he said to us that he will not put more on us than we can bear. So we can be rest assured that whatever we are facing right now, God himself can help us. Be encouraged, be inspired. Do not lift, put down your hand when you are lifted them up unto God. And one of the ways we know that you're lifting up your hands unto God is constantly in prayer over a matter. Because in prayer, we become like power conductors. And I've told us time without number. Grammar does not solve your problems, does not chase your enemies away. Grammar does nothing but express your thoughts. The only thing that the devil understands is power. And that's why we lift up our hands in prayer, like Moses did on the mount, beginning to shout unto the Lord, Lord, I believe by your power I can destroy the enemy. The Bible says that he will fail in the days of adversity. That's because our power is small. And I pray your power shall be increased in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, as I begin to close, I've constantly said that in life, we need God. We need his power. But we also need the support of other men and women. Joshua was the one fighting. Moses was the one that was praying. And the two together gave the Israelites um, a victory. So we always need the support of men and women. Nobody should ever dwell in isolation. I have spiritual fathers. I still spend time with them. They still pray with me. They still pray for me. They pray along with me. Many people, when they think they are super spiritual, often leave themselves vulnerable to the attack of the enemy. And I'm praying in the name that's above every name that the devil will attack you no longer in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Aaron and Ur is always they're always supporting the hands of their uh, of their master Moses. We should also learn to pray for our leaders, those who are in charge of us. Even the Bible encourages because then we can live peaceable life on earth. And I'm praying that God will help us to see beyond the words I've said. Learn to intercede. Learn to proceed in obedience. Moses provided intercession on the mountain. God provided intervention in the valley. Learn to proceed and learn to pray. You see, fight the good fight of faith. 1 Timothy 6 verse 12. The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. Proverbs 21 verse 31. Get friends, those who are like-minded, because iron sharpened iron. A man's counseling is sharpened out of his friend. Proverbs 27, verse 17. So, that's why I encourage you never to miss any prayer meeting. Never miss any prayer meeting. Because those are places where you can have solution to your problem or be empowered to face the one you are going to go face. And then lastly, is that focus on memorials to help you remember. Now, I've often shared this before and I will say it again. If you are not keeping a journal, I want you to begin to keep a journal for your life. The journal is a, is a memorial for what God has done in your life. Testimony, so to say. You can also write the testimonies of others in it. The reason being is there will be times when there will be nobody around you. Your friends, your family, your pastor, those you depend upon, your support group in general, not around you to help you get through the situation. But once you have a memorial, a book, where you can record the things God has done, when he did it, how he did it, and the outcome of the situation, even though you felt that the whole world has turned against you, it gives you the faith to proceed beyond the level you're in. I, I've shared the story of David in the books of First Samuel chapter 30. When he came back and his camp was being ransacked, his children and his wife had been carried away. 
And his men began to cry. He also cried. Warriors are crying like babies. And they cried until they had no more strength to cry. But yet, after doing all of that, God did not speak. Until he began to encourage himself in the Lord. And I believe by saying encourage himself in the Lord, he began to recount the things God has done. If God has done it in the past before, I remember that you did this also. I remember you did that also. That gives you the faith. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, without faith is impossible to please God. So that begins to help you know what the way out is. Let me close the sermon. We understand that we are not fighting. We are not struggling against flesh and blood, against rulers, against authorities, against powers of darkness of this world, against spiritual forces of the evil of the heavenly realm. And we are going to have to fight because we are joined God's army. The day you gave your life to Jesus, you joined God's army. So it's important that you have the sign clearly written over your head that you belong to Christ. That says, I belong to Jehovah Nisi. He is the banner over me. He is my victory over the enemy. And I assure you that that name has never failed before. It will not fail now. Forever, O Lord, that word is settled. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. May you be saved from every challenge of life in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now shall we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. We bless you. We thank you so much for your word as comfort with life and power this morning. Thank you for delivering us from every enemy. Thank you for fighting visible and invisible battles for us. My Father, my God, I pray again in the name that's above every name, Son of the living God. Destroy every walk of the enemy that surrounds us. Every enemy that's attacking us physically, spiritually, Lord, let them be put to shame permanently in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, my Lord and my God, that you will help us in every situation that we find ourselves in. And keep us a reminder that you're the banner over us. We give you all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God.